Hey guys, this is DFD, aka Dark Frozen Deaths, back with another Kamihime Project video. Now, um, this one, this event's already started, but, uh, I'm still putting one of these out anyway, because it's just gonna be quick, and just gonna give you a little bit of a heads up about this advent. But, um, this is a reprint of the Pazuzu advent, and while there isn't too much you really do have to chase after it, there are some things I want to point out. But, um, before I get into their... First things first, some of you may have heard that there's going to be like a roulette thing where there's like pools and all that type of stuff, and then on top of that, there was also mention of uh, a few other things like malicious raids and all that. That's coming very soon. Malicious raids, I think, is at the beginning of next month, and the roulette is at the end of this month. But, um... There's some other things to look forward to as well, so that's something to know. Also, I would suggest that if you can, possibly try to get the characters that's um in a gotcha right now, because both of them are very good, and this is already the start of like a very big power creep for all the elements, honestly. So, um, consider pulling if you actually have the resources to spare, but if you don't, then just stick to the limited stuff because the permanent things are always going to be there. And in the case of good weapons, don't go chasing after weapons unless you know you can spend on a game because there's no point in doing that when pools are getting very, very, like, stretched out, basically. Especially for those that are saving up for pity. You're going to be missing so much stuff in order to save for pity. Which is why I don't recommend it, if you want to be honest. But, um... As for the roulette thing... When that happens, it is like daily pulls, like daily 10 pulls, but the number of 10 pulls you get for that day is where the roulette comes in, so it's like a multiplier. I've done it once before on JP Sad, but they've had two versions of it, so there's that. But look forward to a lot of pulls, because you are guaranteed a 10 pull every day at the very least. If you're lucky, you can get 100 pulls in one day, so who knows. Speaking of free pools, there's free single pools daily if you don't know, so double check the gotcha on that one as well. I mention this because those give you Nikkei medals. It's the only way free players are going to get Nikkei medals, so make very good use of that. Now then, as for the event itself, it's win based, so fire is going to have the advantage. And um, there is a fire character that's in the gotcha right now, which is pretty good, but the other one's Thunder, so be careful if you want to use her. There's no heroic fight. But there is a Ragnarok Plus, so keep that in mind. Now, as for the stuff to go after, I'll explain more on that when we get further down the list. But I will say that you may or may not want to consider the uh, the gun from this. Because there's an interesting little setup you can do with that for a Heroic later down the line. But you need Caspar. Like, there's no point in doing it with um, D'Artagnan. You need Caspar. So... If you're going to have any chance of surviving, you're going to need Caspar for that for that setup, so keep that in mind. Same stuff applies, though. Like, SSR stuff is priority. The gotcha tickets, of course, the Magic Jewels. That's the main reason why I'm doing half these events anyway. The, um, the soul points, if you need them. I still have no idea what these new souls that's been announced is going to be. I keep mentioning that in like every single video at this point, but that's because they are a big, big thing. They're most likely 5th tier souls. So going by the game system, they're going to be double S. And that said, you never know how much stuff you're going to need, so you may want to just rack up on everything. Like fangs, magic jewels, dragonic eyes, the orb things, all of it. Rack up on everything you can. That's the best way I should put it. That said, even though there's a priority, you may want to just start clearing out event lists as much as possible. But you can more or less gauge on how on how important some stuff are because they'll be the harder ones to really empty out. So that said, use those as a guideline. Just don't worry too much about the half elixirs because you'll get a lot of those. That's the only thing you really don't need to chase oh, alongside the SR weapons because... They're very, they're basically just fodder at this point, so there you go. Now then, as for the event itself, when it comes to um the boss, the 
main gimmick is the fact that it's going to combo like a madman. She will have such a high combo rate that you will very easily see double, maybe even triple attack every single turn. So be very, very careful with that. She also has a nasty little habit of poisoning you. And the poison is strong. It's going to take out chunks of your HP. And what, even on the lower difficulties, it is set to eliminate at least 15% of your, your HP if you let it linger. So be careful of that. The higher difficulties are going to up it to upwards of 30% of your HP just gone over the course of it. And this is assuming it's not even reapplied because she has very low orb count before she uses that type of, of ability. So be very, very careful. Now, it also says Flame Prison on here too. That's Burn. It's also a very high damage over time and it's an even stronger one than the Poison. If you are not careful, you will see your HP get wiped out very, very quickly. So bring cleanse, bring ailment block. If you cannot end the fight quickly, you will need those. On top of this, you can get blinded. But when she puts blind on you, it's also going to put it on herself as well. So that's going to reduce her combo rate. Could be a blessing and a curse, depending on how you go through with it. But I'm not going to go over too many more mechanics on that one. It's just basically just... Like, oh, she's going to deal lots of combo damage and lots of um, damage over time. So, prepare for that accordingly. You're very good to go. Blind is very going... Blind is really going to help you out on this. If you can get it, evasion as well. Because evasion on your characters will stack with blind on your enemies. And that will make them miss like a madman. They'll miss, they'll miss like crazy. I'm not even kidding on that. I've tested it out myself. It's It's amazing. But it's also hard to get your hands on evasion type stuff. There are some I don't want to do it, but good luck with that if you don't already have them. Now, this list is a little bit different because um, it shouldn't be like this. This is still the old material exchange list. They all convert to the um, gold one, so keep that in mind. If you have it from the last time, convert all your stuff to gold one. That's all to use. Going over what you can get right here. If you want to be honest, there's a call for all all three SSR stuff, depending on what you're trying to do. The Adolin, when you summon her, she puts blind on your enemies too, so there you go. On top of that, when you start stacking your sub slots with the same element, as in you keep putting more and more wind Adolins in your sub slots, it will increase her, her um, element on attack booster for you, so... It starts off at 30% when you max max her out, but if the sub slots match her, you can get up to 50%. This is the highest elemental attack you will see for wind directly if you do not get anything else out of events. So the thing with that is if you are like not using the um the machine beast that don't from battlefield or gotcha ones or anything like that, then this is the highest elemental attack you'll see given to win directly. And I say directly because there's an event Oge that can still get 55%, but that's towards all elements, depending on how you set it up. So if that sounds confusing, it's not really, it's just match your sub slots, you'll get the most out of this Adolin. 50% is still quite a lot, so she easily can be a main slot Adolin until you get something better. Now, as for the the um, Lance SSR weapon, this one you may want to have on your um, your grid even later on because it gives you Assault plus Ascension, which is a very good combination. Wind's Ascension for um, grindable weapons is also on a Vigor weapon, so it really depends on what you want to do in that instance. But this is very helpful right out the gate, so... Assault is always high, highly valued, like highly valued. So is Vigor as well, but that takes a little bit more to use, plus you need Assault to go with the Vigor. So... You can easily use this weapon regardless, and then on top of that... It does have a special little effect if you put it on your souls where you can grant blind to enemies. And again, that can be very helpful for some fights when you're getting smacked a lot. It also can grant poison when it's found unbroken, but that's not really 
something you worry about too much because any of the um, damage over time you deal from weapons isn't that strong. It really isn't. Damage over time is really not that strong if you're dealing it. Even with the ones that can dish out six digit damage, but by then you're probably doing seven digits easily. So don't worry too much about the um, poison effect. Damage over time is not something we really chase. You do want to chase the um the darkness effect if you want, because there are a few lance souls that you can burst and actually get some good help for it. I can easily see his Kleptus using this weapon. Or her weaker version, which is Andromeda. Now, as for the other weapon, again, there's a unique thing about that. It's got a pride effect. Not necessarily something you want to chase, but it does have a lot of base attack power for those that can't get Final Break weapons yet. The main reason why anyone would probably want to keep this weapon is the effect it gives when you burst, which is Curse. Curse isn't that that commonly found in the game, nor are characters that can actually, like enemies that can heal themselves. So that's why we don't really worry about Curse too much. However, there was a heroic fight that should return later on, by the way, where there is an enemy that revives themselves by fully healing themselves at, at um, 1 HP. They basically have their own version of auto revive. Curse can prevent that. So that would literally cheese part of the fight if you use that on um on Caspar. Because you probably don't want to use um D'Artagnan for that. So that said, you may want to hold on to this weapon. If you if you plan on tackling that heroic, I suggest you do. The fact that you remove one of the two auto revives instantly really helps out with that. And if there's other methods to cause curse that are wind element, that really helps you as well. So, keep that in mind. That is something to really pay attention to for that fight, so you may want to hold on to at least one copy of this weapon. I would say just to max it out just for the heck of it, but you will want to have at least one copy of this weapon if you plan on tackling that heroic. It is a thunder heroic. And once we get heroic record, it will be there. Now the only other thing to really worry about is the, the normal event missions where basically you have to clear with a certain rarity. If you do it with our rarity characters, then you're pretty much good to go. It shouldn't be too hard unless you're just basically starting off the game. But, clear expert with SR characters. Core Ultimate with SR characters, Core Ragnarok with R characters. Your subslots also have to be that rarity. And as far as it goes with Ragnarok Plus, just do it without using an elixir. And to be quite honest, you should be trying to do everything in the game without an elixir anyways, that's the main point. You want to be strong enough to survive all these fights. But anyways, that's all I'm going to leave for this. Again, this isn't really an event where you have to chase out too much, but there are some things that can have their uses, so... Depending on what you have, the SSR stuff can be worth. The I don't automatically worth, but the, the weapons, you may or may not keep them, depending on what you're doing. But all three do indeed have their uses. So, for the most part, this, this is just something to stock up on different stuff, like the magic jewels and all that, for the most part. I will say this, though, if you don't plan on keeping the SSR weapons... You're going to use them as fodder. There's a lot of stuff that's eating up a crap ton of orbs, and we're going to get a little bit more of it later. You do want to stock up with, on as many experience orbs as you can get. It is going to die out very, very quickly. Same thing for, for um, Adolin orbs as well, because there's going to be some pretty expensive upgrades that use Adolin orbs. And there might be more, depending on what the um, next batch of souls want. So, keep that in mind. And lastly, I do want to add that there's been a few JP side things that are going to be interesting later down the line. First off, there are extra large skills that have been introduced, and a few of them can have their uses, especially depending on the weapon. So, that said, you may or may not want to pay attention to your weapon skills and whatnot. The extra large stuff is so strong that you can more or less have one of them. And basically cap whatever is boosting with just one catastrophe I don't want. You don't even need to do the, the friend one and own your own. So 
that said, it is something to look forward to later because it's pretty important that you have all that type of stuff. But keep in mind that they are indeed gotcha weapons. But the fact that they are starting to become, they're starting to give a lot of weapons that have XL for one skill effect and then there's another skill effect that does two things at once, that's quite impressive. If I remember correctly, one of them was extra large and then it had two medium effects. So that's strong. That is very, very strong. But anyways, that's all for this. More of this will come soon. And again, you may or may not want all the SSR stuff, but I suggest you get it anyways. You never know. But that's all for now, guys. More will come soon, and take care.